If it makes you money or brings us happiness, you'll find it right here. This is The Purple Tie Show. Welcome to the show. On this episode of Purple Tie Guys podcast, we are going to talk about starting a blog. Yes. I'm going through my notes right now. You hear me feverishly clicking? You're feverishly clicking. <clears throat> Um, so we debated on whether or not to do a video for this, but I really don't think we need it because it's pretty, they've made it pretty straightforward. Yeah. As long as you know what platform you're going to use. I think that's the most confusing thing for most people because there's like nine bajillion platforms. There is, and you've got the option of installing and maintaining your own blog on your own website. Mm, and a lot that's of the, true, true. A lot of the uh, hosts nowadays provide software that you can install that will also provide a blog on your site. Well, so most... We'll say most um, current websites are on either Joomla or WordPress. And we talked about this in another mm -hmm. podcast, mm -hmm. you know, starting a website. Um, all those have blog tools, backends. Yeah. How would you refer plugins? Modules. I don't know. Look, here's the thing. WordPress was built specifically to be... Your blog. own blog that yep. you controlled. And it that's what it started and life it as. it diverted itself into this amazing web platform. Yeah. I personally love WordPress. Yeah. Yeah. Like out of, I would say out of, uh, out of all the things that you could build a website on, I think WordPress is the best. The best. I maybe agree. not the easiest because we've worked with a couple, you know, we worked with Wix, we worked with Weebly and a few others. And they're okay. Yeah. I mean, they're not there's bad. nothing there's nothing wrong with them other than the fact that if you're on a platform that locks you in, then you can't move it anywhere else. Like Wix We have a and client Squarespace. right now that is on Weebly. Yeah. And she is like <clears throat> having a mild panic attack. Thinking about, okay, what is going to happen when I start transitioning this thing from Weebly to WordPress? Yeah, I mean, you're talking about needing to recreate the the entire site. Well, it's but like trying to... Uh, there's no moving that site. No, it's, it is no. on the Wix platform. It's like Squarespace. If you mm -hmm. develop with Squarespace, you can't take your Squarespace site and move it to another host. It is right. on Squarespace. It is just on Squarespace. But... We're here to talk about blogs. We are here to talk about blogs. I got diverted because of the the other stuff. I'm very passionate about the other you stuff. You can be. I can yeah. be. I'm very passionate about a lot of things. <laughs> do you so, have stickers? I do. All I, over the back I don't. Of you? Actually, my, my new vehicle has no stickers on the back window. Yeah. It's very clean. Um, I'm uh, gonna, I want to talk about the original, oh, man. The original blog uh, platform. Back in the day... Are you talking about Blogger? Back in the day, there was something before Blogger. Um, Bef before Blogger? Yeah. Back in now, the I'm the old one. How come I don't know about this? You weren't interested in blogging and stuff mm. whenever the internet was young and frivolous. Young and frivolous. <laughs> when I was a youngst lad. Yeah. Youngst. When, I was, when I was young and frivolous, the back in the day... We got the term blog from two words, web log. And it was essentially just a journal, an online journal or a diary, so to speak. And the very first one I remember, I'm sure it's not the first, but the very MySpace. first one, no, God, no. The very first one I remember was called Blogspot. And Aren't they still around? I think they are. But uh, now I want to know they that that was during the days of live journal and dead journal and um, uh, that what was the hell is a dead journal? Same thing as a live journal, but angsty and goth. Next dark, <laughs> just today pitch black today. I want to die. Yeah, 
basically. I'm going to also want to die tomorrow, so I'm going to go ahead and blog about that, too. Yeah. It's like, what? What is it? Anyway. I, I tried out my third shade of black fingernail polish today. <laughs> uh, it's a little too But there gray. was a lot. There was a lot of really niche blogging platforms, you know, early on. And now that blogging has become the the sort of backbone of content in the modern age. Hey, there's a chick that makes nearly $60,000 a year talking about peanut butter on her blog. Yeah. What I was going to say was that there's niches that are not as ambiguous as like live journal and dead journal and, and the early days of blogging because you've got things like medium, which is a business blogging platform. Okay. You've got things like um, DeviantArt, which is specifically, it's not specifically a blogging platform, but they it's an art-based... Yeah, it's for artists. ...community that has a blog platform built into it. Well, you know, funny thing, you should mention that. Um, I keep getting this notification, and I messaged Randy the other day or yesterday about it for SMA Connect. And I think it's oh. like a, <laughs> I, I don't want to be like, oh, it's a Facebook for SMA, but it's, it's, but it's basically like a, a Facebook for it's, SMA. No, it's kind of like a forum where okay. you can go in and ask questions and stuff. Anyway, I don't know a whole lot about it. I'm going to have to get with him and figure out what that's all about. But I digress. Yeah. the Whenever blogging became an obvious form of content that was a relatively straightforward way to get content on sites everybody picked up the the blog you you're over here i am so distracted you're just yawning oh, tongue man. hanging out like dude it is it is late it is, it's not late it's like 6 40 in the afternoon and i'm just like dude this day is done um well okay so what i was saying was the back in the late um, 2000s, early 2010s, everyone had a blog platform. Facebook had had blogging. MySpace was still a thing back then. I, I they just had knew blogging. you were going to be like, everyone had a blog. Well, everyone I mean, did have true. a blog. true. Everyone had a MySpace page at some point in time. Yeah, and everyone... Uh, I remember my sister used to post uh, blog updates to her Facebook page all the time. She loved doing that. Mm. But they took away that option because it was not really the, like they they integrated it into the whole newsfeed thing. Now it's not like a specific blog for you. It's sort of a community blog for you and all of your friends. Well, they still have you know Facebook stories and stuff. But it, again, that's the whole that's in a whole the whole other other podcast. Thing. Yeah, we will so, talk about that in a future podcast very very soon. But I've got a list here of a whole bunch of blogs, and I'll just run down the list real quick and. And we can talk about them individually. We can tear them apart. We've got Blogger, which we've talked about. Yep. We've got WordPress, Joomla, Drupal, which is all oh, CMS. Don't even talk about Drupal. Well, they've they've all got blogging no, stuff. No, I will hit you. Uh, I, mm. You got Medium. You've got Tumblr. You've got Ghost.org, which I don't know what that is. I actually wrote it down, and I have no idea what that is. I was going to say that's your note, not mine. Yeah, I, I didn't do. I, I didn't. Do Let's that find one. out. I'm going right now. The We're, professional publishing platform Ghost is a fully open source, adaptable platform for building and running a modern online publication. Uh, who so, knew? Who it's knew? like uh, so. It's e like a white paper. It's like zines. Do you remember zines back in the '90s where oh, you get I the was, mm. the um, gosh, what were they called? I mean, was it just zines? Where they would do the, uh, <laughs> okay. You're sitting there I'm like, si you're yeah, sitting there I'm trying to coach me into it. You're like, say the word, say the word. I'm like, I don't know the word. <laughs> Back in the 90s, whenever punk was, you know, really popular where I was, you would find these uh, photocopied crappy magazines that have been stapled together. Oh, you mean like 4,800? Like 48, like the Hacker, like magazine. The hacker yeah. magazine, but now, that, that actually to... became a legitimate magazine. But Yeah, but it started out as just, yeah. you know. Yes, yes, so those. You that, know what I'm but now it's online. Oh, I'm sure, yes. So that's, now it's online. Now it's yeah. online. Okay. So it's kind of, you can make white papers and stuff. and You could, Or yes. you could talk about hacker stuff and yeah. security things yep. and stuff. So what's your next one? That was all of them. Uh, Ghost.org and Tumblr. Um, Tumblr's one of is those. Is Tumblr still a thing? 
Yeah, yeah. The mass <laughs> mass porn exodus of 2017 oh didn't my shut God. it down. Shh, dude, that was so bad. So I just want to Let, let's go backwards. Let's talk about Tumblr first. I want to I want a side tangent on Tumblr for just a second. Oh my gosh, everyone has side tangent on Tumblr. <laughs> it's so <laughs> it's so friggin' true. <laughs> Tumblr was, still is, it's a really popular platform, but they lost about half of their entire community at the end of 2017, 2018. Anyway, Yahoo bought them, discovered there was a bunch of porn. Yahoo had them? I don't remember. I don't remember the specifics. Anyway, at the end of either 2017 or 2018, they purged all the porn off of uh, Tumblr. Which was like two-thirds of it. It was a lot. It was a lot. And they uh, lost half the community. And they just haven't been back. And they haven't rebuilt. And now they're being sold to somebody else. And there was talks for a while that Pornhub was going to buy them because they wanted to bring the porn back. And, like, I don't know the whole sort of details. Wow, this whole... This... This podcast is like on the edge of not being able to be family friendly. <laughs> I mean, it was in all the news outlets. Everyone was talking about it online. I was like, okay, this is so, news? So we're not, uh, so are we talking about legitimate? Legitimate. Well, like, I almost see, said, are we talking about legitimate porn blogs here? Or are we talking about, <laughs> so. My Tell me, Robert, blog, what porn blogs have you been reading recently? <laughs> Not ghost. Not Tumblr. Not, not ghost.io or whatever it was. Go, yeah. So okay. Uh, let let's let's. Well, you know take what? A let's moment. take a sponsor and, and regroup. Let's here, take a okay? moment and regroup. Does your practice suffer from weak patient flow? Purple tie guys may be right for you. Purple tie guys is the most effective way to fill your waiting room with new patients. Clients usually see significant improvement in as little as 30 days. Since I began working with Purple Tie Guys, my stream of new patients has never been stronger and my waiting room is packed. Side effects may include swelling of the waiting room, increased happiness, and a better bottom line. Serious, less common side effects include sports cars and Swiss bank accounts. If you experience patient flow that lasts more than eight hours, Hire additional staff and tell your marketing advisor immediately. Increase your patient flow with Purple Tie Guys. No contracts, just results. Well, that was a nice little diversion. So, let's talk about actually what we started this podcast to talk about, and that's starting a blog. Yes. Uh, first thing we listed off was Blogger. It's yes. very straightforward. Third-party blog host. But so let me ask this: So when you get one of these third-party blog, blog, bloggers, platforms, you know the key to the blog platform or the blog, the reason you want to do the blog is to be seen as the expert in your field, right? You can have eighteen thousand years of college, and people don't see that. Like they see the certificate, and they're like, "Oh, cool, he's got eighteen years of college. He's a doctor." or dentist or you know whatever right? right pediatrician but when you create content you can really really be seen as the expert right usually it's and and i think that's very important to be said in this we're not creating a blog just to create a blog because i think it's cool and we want to type some stuff in it you know our blog i this podcast yeah it's because we want people to, you know, hear our content, see our content, and realize, dude, these guys really know what the crap they're talking about. They're not just a bunch of dumb rednecks from Alabama. Hillbillies. Neither one of those were great. So go right ahead. <laughs> anyway, uh, all you really need to do if you're going to decide to let someone else host your blog is link from your website, which you should have your own website by now, yes. to the blog and vice versa. Uh, just somewhere in your website, either on the menu or something like that, have a link that goes to, you know, purpletieguys.blogger.com or whatever your URL for your blog right. on Blogger and then is. And in the blog post, 
you have need to that link, link back, back to purpletieguys.com or right. you know, dranthony.com or whatever, right? right? Mm-hmm. Um, and so most, that's easy enough. Yeah, most of these third party uh, blog hosts are very similar. Um, there are some specific blogs. Well, there are some specific blog platforms that are catered towards specific. Oh, I thought you were going to go with there. Certain ones have certain finesses that, because they do. Like, um, you know, WordPress is more like writing something in Word, like Microsoft Word, where. You know, some of the other platforms like uh, Medium and some of that, it's a little, like, it's a little different. It's, they, they've got some nuances about them. They are slightly different. Doing things like inserting pictures or video or audio mm-hmm. or something takes a little, you got to find the spot. You got to find the button to do the thing. And some of them don't even allow that. Like some of them, Allie, you know, one, our, she's a personal uh, triathlon coach, personal trainer. She was trying to update her website, and she didn't put the picture in the right place, right. and it would publish, but it wouldn't publish. And so there's just some weird stuff yeah. whenever we start talking about different platforms. And that's, WordPress is probably the easiest. Yes, and but they're all starting to sort of coalesce into a single standardized blog sort of template. Um, whereas WordPress used to be like typing in Word, now it's all block-based, so you... You go in there and you click and you start typing and then if you hover your mouse to the left of where you just typed, you get a little plus button. If you click the plus button, it gives you a pop-up with all the things you can insert either above or below those words. And that's, See, I just told myself that I don't do any of that. Yeah, the that's brand new. I don't publish content. I make content. Yeah, as of the latest version of WordPress, that's how it was. Anything before that looked like a word processor. Yeah. I think that's another big um, thing to bring up in this is, you know, I do. I create a lot of content, but I don't publish that content. You publish some of it. Um, you know, the podcast, I usually save it out. You do the editing and uploading. Um, you know, a lot of the stuff that you do is, isn't is the content that we traditionally think of as blog content. It's audio, it's ad copy, right. it's uh, video, it's stuff like that. Right. Uh, so you don't have to deal with the back end of a whole lot of blog platforms. Which is fine with me. And like we said earlier, they're all going to be a little bit different. I was dealing with a Wix site earlier today that swore up and down it had a blog. And you go to the blog page on the actual front end of the website and none of the stuff you typed was there. And I started a support ticket and everything, and I went back 35 minutes later, and my blog post showed up. So it just took forever. It just took to forever post. to post, and, and we're not used to that. Yeah, whenever you publish on your website, if it's running any sort of content management system, it's instant. Well, I mean, WordPress is like you better not hit the publish button until you're dang sure you're ready to publish, because yep. that thing will be gone. Yep, hundred percent. Like done. Yep. So we talked about WordPress. We talked about Tumblr. We talked about blogger. Ghost, blogger. What else we got? Uh, the only other specific thing that I had written down was Medium. Medium. Uh, yeah, Medium, Weebly, and something else. Wix. That was it. Okay. Well, we talked about Weebly. We and would not suggest Weebly for most anyone. No, their their publishing platform is is very janky. That's a great word for. I it. was stopping you before you used the other one. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm just not used to it. You know, same with Wix. I'm not used to it. I had to use one earlier today and I don't remember the name of it, but it was mm. specific for, um, doctors or... Office site. Yeah, that's what Office it was. site. And... And that it, one's weird. Well, so. so, like, uh, Wix run like a bottle of honey that had set out in, you know, 30 degree weather. I mean, it was just slow as... Christmas, molasses, all the things that are slow. It was just worse than old all people. Of them. No, that's not true. Blake! That's not true. There's fast old people. <laughs> anyway. They live in the city. So. Um, Office Site had a weird division. It had a place for blog posts and it had a place for things called articles. But they were put in in the same spot. And it was like there's no 
real distinguish. There's no way to distinguish between the two things other than the title that's above them. It's because they don't want the doctor to do his... So here's what sets... You know, and I, I'm, I know this is going to sound like an ad, but this is what sets us apart. And I said this earlier to a client this week, and she was like, oh my God, that's why I love y'all. You know, we started out as computer people. Yeah. You know, fixing computers that we can get on the internet and viruses and stuff that transitioned into... I know there's a mosquito in this. There was a mosquito if in the studio. There's a mosquito. Um, <laughs> there's a mosquito. But we transitioned from computer repair to marketing. Yeah. And so we're not a bunch of marketing gurus that are trying to get this computer thing figured out. We're like, we cut our teeth on the internet. We, we've we done so much DIY stuff when it comes to the internet. We were talking about it earlier today. We started our very first, well, not our very first website, but at a point long ago, far, far away, we thought to ourselves, you know what? Oh, my screw, God. Please don't even bring screw that. Screw the hosts. Oh, we're like, man, we don't screw need those we, internet we don't, hosts. We don't, we need, don't stink, need that. We don't need no stinking host. We do that ourselves. We can do we're that smart. ourselves. So I barreled straight in head first. I installed a web server. I installed an email server. I immediately got us blacklisted. <sighs> We got our, got our IP address blacklisted. I mean, we couldn't get on the internet. Man, so it was bad. We couldn't send email for like three weeks until our email until our IP address fell off of the the blacklist, whatever. Yeah. And I'm on the phone with with well, at that time we were with ITC Deltacom, um, which has now been sold to Earthlink. Earthlink. They're awful. And I was like, hey, I've got to get my IP address changed. And they were like, um, that's going to take a support ticket and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, no, you don't understand. Like, I need it now. I got the other one blacklist. <laughs> like, I didn't know that, but I'm like, I need it now. And uh, they just wouldn't do it, man. They were like, no, we can't well, do it. Well, they've just been, they were terrible from the get-go. They, I mean, they really were, but... We the point we is, were, you know, we were like, hey, smart. we're going to build our own web server. Hey, and the websites ran great. Yeah. They were, well, they were I amazing. Could, I could put as much hardware as I needed behind it. Absolutely. If we needed, you know. If I needed more RAM, if I needed a bigger hard yeah, drive, if I needed just, a faster processor. We just did it. I just did it. I didn't have to pay additional monthly money. But we got our, our entire email platform was blacklisted. Like, I'm surprised the FBI didn't just call and be like, hey, man, could y'all chill out? I'm, I I'm just glad. After that fiasco, oh, I was like, I, I understand my limitations as yeah. an IT person at this point. I'm like, what? That's but, $500 a year for GoDaddy? Sign me up. Yeah, I... At that point, I, I knew I know more about hosting than I ever wanted to know. Oh yeah, yeah. And that's why it doesn't intimidate me whenever I go into a new content management system, you know, administrations panel. Yeah, but here's the thing, though. You know, it makes us so. You know, ultimately, we are internet marketers. But when we, hey man, my website's jacked up. Oh, okay, ring ring. You're going to kill that. Oh, you, you missed him. You I missed, missed this him. mosquito. He's over here. So anyway. You hear that loud <laughs> smack microphone? So when we call someone like GoDaddy or or, or a HostGator <laughs> or, you know, Bluehost or whoever for the client, and they're like, oh, yeah, the um, switch trigger on, <laughs> on the Seagate panel of the Earthlink data connection network it was messed up and we're like no you're those, making stuff up yeah, none of those, none of those none words of those, string together to no, make a coherent that's sentence that's not a, that that's not what what's actually we're, look man we're having some issues and we're trying to work through them and we're expecting to have it done within the hour cool cool why did you just tell why me that tell me like, why did you try to make up ago. yeah why did you try to make up crap and so that's what i think sets us apart is we started off as computer people so we understand it so that when we do have a technical issue with a vendor, it's uh, an actual like intelligent conversation with them. Yeah, we can yell at them in actual like their <laughs> vocabulary, 
Uh, but I, my point in all that was going to be starting a blog is really easy. There's tons and tons and tons of platforms. Yes. Um, and nine times out of ten, if you're going with a third party especially, it's just signing up with your name, email address, and password, and you're good to go. Yep. And starting it on a... And most of them are free. Yeah, most of them are free with a limited ability for certain like, things. So, yeah, if you want the, you know, like good analytics and stuff with WordPress, you're going to have to pay for that. Yeah. I mean, obviously, they can't give that stuff away for free. And if you want to use your own website, if you're running a content management service, uh, content management software like WordPress or Joomla, it has blogging software built into it. All you've got to do is find it. Um, well, most most everything. I mean, look at Office Site. Um, yeah, Wix Office Site, Wix. Wix, Squarespace, all of those have Squarespace has it. Blogging Did you built say in. Squarespace? I just said that's exactly what I just said. I thought said. you said something else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes. Squarespace, they got their blogs too. <laughs> okay. They giving away blogs for free. <laughs> On that note, I will say thank you for putting up with our shenanigans. This afternoon, this evening, tonight. God, it's late. It's six, seven. It's past my bedtime. It's past my bedtime. (laughs) Anyway, we appreciate it. You can find us online, purpletieguys.com. Literally, Purple Tie Guys, anywhere you want to look for us. Have a great night. You're not going to say bye. Bye.